What is rotoscoliosis? Many patients come in and consult with me regarding their scoliosis. And one common concern they have is, hey doctor, I've been uh, diagnosed with something called a rotoscoliosis or my scoliosis has rotation. And they wanna know how we're gonna go about dealing with that. Well, first of all, to understand what rotoscoliosis is and how you go about correcting or dealing with it, you need to understand what scoliosis is. All scoliosis is a st structural condition of the spine and it's progressive in nature. It's either for progressing fast in adolescent stage or progressing slow in the adult stage, but we know it's progressive. And in the adolescent stage, it's progressing because of growth, and in the adult stage, it's progressing because of gravity. The, in order for it to be diagnosed with a scoliosis, we need, need to have a spinal curvature from the front view or the posterior view or the back view of 10 degrees or greater, and every case of scoliosis needs to have some associated rotation, meaning if there's no rotation, in the curvature, it's truly not a scoliosis. It's more like a postural misalignment. So when we look at a, the, there being a curvature from the spine, we know scoliosis is a three-dimensional misalignment, meaning not only is it bending, but it's also rotating, that's the rotation component, and it's also translating um, in, the, in the A to P view and also in the sagittal view or the side view. So this three-dimensional misalignment is what scoliosis involves. When the spine twists in this, from this front to back view or the coronal view, what we're looking at, when it starts this twisting is what the rotation, what we're talking about. It's when the spine actually moves and rotates in this way. And what we understand when we look at scoliosis is that 90% of the time, that scoliosis will always rotate into the concavity. Meaning if you have a curve that's shaped like this, it's always gonna, we're gonna rotate or the posterior act, act, aspect of the spine or the back of the spine will rotate into the curvature. It will never rotate away. You very rarely see a curve going like this and the spine rotating like that. I, it's very, very rare. In fact, if you ever see a counter rotation from the curve going into the concavity, normally we're thinking something is severely occurring within the spinal cord. There's some kind of uh, tumor pushing on it to make it happen. It's something more than just typical scoliosis because we normally don't see it. It's always rotating in. Now, interesting enough, if somebody will have like an S curve, the spine is rotating differently on each curve. So if they have a lumbar curve, they're rotating this way. And then when they go into the thoracic spine, they're rotating in the opposite direction. So it creates this corkscrew effect that they're rotating into each other, normally always into the midline. So when we look at understanding how much this rotation can affect the spine, we know the spine, the rotation is normally directly related to Cobb angle or the curve of the spine, meaning the more severe the curve becomes, the more rotation tends to happen to it. We normally don't see 80 degree curves with a little bit of rotation. If you see an 80 degree curve, you're gonna see severe rotation. If you see a 25 degree curve, you may see, you're gonna see a lot less rotation. Now, sometimes the term rotoscoliosis could mean that a patient has a higher level of rotation than a expected with their curve type. Now, the problem with that is there's no real good way of measuring how much rotation objectively. Like when you look at scoliosis, you can measure 25 degrees, you can measure 30 degrees, you can measure 40 degrees, you can measure a neck degree angle and it's pretty accurate, normally within a few degrees of that measurement. When we're looking at rotation, there's no great way of measuring it because you have to measure it from the top, meaning if you take an x-ray down through the entire body, which is impossible, and see how much the spine has rotated in space like this, and there's no great way of measuring it because we know we're looking at when you look at an x-ray like this and there's a turn and you take an x-ray from the front there's going to be distortion in what you're seeing so there's no great way of measuring rotation there are ways but they're known, not known to be very accurate and normally they're just looking at categories not actual degrees so whether you improve somebody's rotation five degrees or it torsions by five degrees it's almost impossible to tell so it's more like a visual assessment it's not an exact degree measurement but when we look at rotoscoliosis or rotation associated with scoliosis, what are the symptoms associated with it? Well, they are exactly the same that which associated with normal scoliosis. First thing tends to be postural changes, uneven hip, uneven shoulders, uneven waist, un uneven rib arches, like space between the arms and legs that are asymmetrical, clothes that doesn't fit properly. You see changes to gait and coordination. We're seeing these structural asymmetrical changes that we would see in normal scoliosis that we would see in a rotoscoliosis, meaning the person has more than average rotation based upon their scoliosis size. 
Can a rotoscoliosis be more complex? Absolutely, the more rotation that happens in a person's spine, typically the harder it is to deal with. One thing of note is that we actually believe that the first thing that happens in a scoliosis case, even ones that are not classified as rotoscoliosis, we actually believe the very first thing is rotation. When we look at infants, meaning patients under two years of age that don't have a big curve, they have some curve yet, one way of determining whether we think it's gonna progress is we look at the rib angles and the rib angles are affected by rotation more than the, by the bend. So if we see a rib angle that's off center when one rib's flatter and one rib is more vertical and we see a small curve, we say that one has a higher risk of progression because we know that's where the rotation's associated with that type of progression. So we think the first thing that happens with patients is the spine tends to twist and then the curve happens as a result. Now this is theoretical, we really don't know, but no matter what treatment that you choose, you have to make sure a treatment option addresses all three dimensions the bend, the translation, and the rotation, and all the dimensions. And if you do have a treatment that addresses all dimensions, what you do is you get the very best outcome because it's impossible to reduce one without the other and get a stable reduction. So you wanna make sure that you address all three dimensions. At Scoliosis Reduction Center, we have uh, programs, exercises, therapy, traction, even brace design that deals with all three dimensions to make sure that you get the very best results. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.